In today's episode, I'm going to build two new heavy-duty sawhorses. I already have a collection of sawhorses in various sizes. Some are simple and lightweight, like these two for painting, and the ones for cutting and general carpentry. But I needed to build a pair that can carry more load, specifically for supporting our camper when it's not on the truck. I'll need them to help carry the weight of the 4,500 pound camper and be long enough for the width of its base. So I made the new sawhorses from 2x6 lumber. And as they'll be outside most of the time, I chose pressure treated stock. I decided on a height of 30 inches with a length of 52 inches. That will cover the standard 48 inch width of the camper and have it supported high enough that I can still walk under the cab over bunk without hitting my head and the stairs can still fold all the way down. The sawhorses will relieve most of the load that the electric happy jacks carry. I'll still have them in contact with the ground under enough load to help stabilize the camper, so it doesn't move when we're inside. Here's how the sawhorses go together. A 48 inch 2x6 is sandwiched between another 2x6 and a bottom 2x4. This will create a very strong I-beam. The 2x4 at the bottom of the beam will create the 80 degree angle for the legs. They are also 2x6s and are cut 29 inches long with a 10 degree bevel at both ends. Wrapping around the legs to create a stretcher will be four 2x6s. These will be attached up 2.5 inches from the ground. I have a free plan for this sawhorse that you can download from my website, manabouttools.com sawhorse. I'll put a link in the description as well. I'll start by cutting the three pieces that make up the I-beam top. A 52 inch 2x6, then a 48 inch 2x4, and a 48 inch 2x6. This sawhorse design is not a new idea. People have been building variations of this simple configuration for years. What I like about this design is its strength and simplicity. You don't need any expensive tools to build these. A speed square and a circular saw can do all the cuts, and an impact driver and glue for assembly is really all you need. My sliding compound miter saw is overkill, but it's what I already have, so I'll do all the cuts with it. I'll mark a center line along the length of the top 2x6, then drill four equally spaced 1 8 inch pilot holes. I'll make a mark 2 inches in from the end. I used the 2x4 as a reference for the thickness of the middle 2x6, so I could then draw an edge line. Then I'll set the middle 2x6 on this line and drive in screws from underneath. In my haste, I forgot to add some exterior wood glue at this joint. I used number 10 by 4 inch GRK screws to assemble these three pieces. These are self drilling screws, but sometimes drilling a pilot hole can make positioning and assembly easier. Next, I'll mark the center of the 2x4, then add some glue this time. And I used the combination square set to 1 inches to center the 2x4 over the 2x6. Then run in four screws. Next I'll cut the two 48 inch long stretchers that connect the legs at the bottom. And I'm yet to install my full workshop vacuum system, so I'll use my portable vac for a while longer. Sometimes the board end from the mill is clean and square, but this one needed a shave. For the bevel at the top and bottom of the legs, I'll tilt my blade over 10 degrees. And I'll need to slide part of the saw fence out of the way of the blade. I'll make the first cut, then mark down from that 29 inches. These angles are parallel, so I'll slide the board straight down to make the next cut. And I'll cut four of those to make up the legs. When done, I'll tilt my saw back up to 90 degrees. On the bench, I'll make a mark three and a half inches up from the bottom of each leg, then draw a square line at that point. Then 
I attached 2x4s to the edge of the bench at 90 degrees to act as stops. This will make assembly of the legs and stretchers easier. With the parts roughly positioned, I'll add some glue where the legs and stretcher meet. I use number 8 2 and a half inch GRK washer head screws here, four screws on each end of the stretcher. With a tape I can check that the legs are parallel before running in the rest of the screws. If I'm fussy with my measurements and angles here when I'm building the sawhorses, I hope to be rewarded later when they sit flat without any wobble. and I'll repeat all of those steps to attach the stretcher to the legs for the other side. I think it would be fine to attach the legs to the I-beam top one at a time, then add the stretcher. I decided to do it this way so I could more easily keep the legs and stretcher square to each other, even though it would make final assembly a bit more awkward, as you'll see later. I'll bring the I-beam back up on the bench and angle it with some blocks. Then I'll roughly position the leg assembly in place to figure out where the screws need to go. The top of the legs will get some glue and the number 10 by 4 inch screws will be run in 5.5 inches down the leg and into the 2 by 4 at the point where it makes contact with the leg. Just one screw to hold one end while I run around to the other end to drive in the screws there. I also want to drive two screws down through the top and into the end grain of the legs and I can eyeball their location with the help of my small speed square. I think the mark was just under an inch in from the edge. I'll flip that over then position the other leg assembly, getting it roughly in place. And looking back at this now, I could have cut two blocks of wood to prop up the side and keep it in place while I added glue and screws. I marked five and a half inches down the legs and started four screws. This helped so I could hold it in place with my left hand and run in the screws with my right. On a bit of a side note here, I've been wanting to make some simpler YouTube videos that are less involved and less time consuming to shoot and edit and I just can't seem to do it. What I thought would be a simple sawhorse video still seems to turn into a long production, and I just can't help but turn it into a detailed tutorial. Anyways, back to the build. With that done, I can stand the sawhorse up and run in one extra screw at the top of each leg. The last parts to cut are the end stretchers, and I'll rotate the bed of my saw 10 degrees. I'll cut this part around a half inch longer than I needed, according to the drawing. I'll position it against the legs, and scribe a line where it meets the end of the long side stretcher. Then I'll cut it to its finished length on this pencil line. I'll apply some glue then screw this end stretcher to the legs. And for this I use number 9 by 3 and an eighth GRK screws. And I ran screws into the legs and into the ends of the long stretchers.
And to finish the assembly of the sawhorse, I'll attach the last stretcher on the other end. While the glue is drying, I can remove the 2x4 stops I screwed to the edge of the workbench. I'll bevel the sharp cut edges with the sanding disc attachment on my angle grinder. The disc I used was a bit too coarse, so I hit it again with a finer paper on my orbital sander. I'll apply some wood preserver to any cut ends, and an extra coat on the bottoms of the feet, as this is where I would expect any rot to start. This preservative is thin like water, so a small foam applicator did the trick. When the preservative was dry, I can position the horses under the camper. I'll need to level them so the camper does not twist when lowered onto the horses. So I'll try to have the tops on the same level plane. With blocks added under the legs and the sawhorses level, I can lower the camper. And that seemed to work pretty well. The idea was to take some of the load from the happy jacks and add stability. Finally, I'll attach the sawhorses together with diagonal 2x4s. This will stiffen the supports front to back. The design of the sawhorses already provides stiffness side to side, so I don't think I need to do anything there. I built these for a specific purpose, but this simple strong design for a sawhorse can be modified to suit almost anything. The height and length can be easily adjusted on the drawing to suit your needs. And that's it! Please drop me a comment below with your thoughts or questions. I always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.